Good afternoon. Grab your favorite beverage, have a seat. Video's probably going to be a little lengthy. So, the main topic of this video is going to be about the quote unquote infallible Word of God and uh, how it's pretty fallible. We're going to discuss that, and before we get into that, though, I am going to address a few things involving barren dependent because it kind of all goes hand in hand. So again, grab your favorite drink, have a seat, let's get started. So first of all, per Baird's brief today, uh, man, pride goeth before the fall. And when you sit there and talk about how, well, Russia's got, you know, uh, submarines by Cuba and all that, missiles could make it, and you talk about how, um, well, you said missiles could make it in three minutes, and you talk about how in the first uh, 30 seconds we'd have taken them out of the sky, and, and within the following two and a half minutes we'd have taken the ships out. Okay, stop. Number one, just stop. That's a bunch of egotistical, prideful bullshit that's coming out of your mouth. We have no defense against hypersonic missiles. Repeat after me, Bear. We have no defense against hypersonic missiles. Okay? And by you, you know, ever heard of this little weapon they've got? I think it's the weapon is called Poisodon. If I'm mistaken, I apologize, but I'm putting that out front that I could be wrong on the name of the actual weapon. But it's the nuclear weapon that can cause a tidal wave off the coast of the nation, which they have suspicions they may have deployed. So take your pride, your ego, your hubris, and all of that, ball it up, big old nice ball, and shove it straight up your ass. Because you're talking about human lives, if you haven't noticed. Now, that's to start out. Now... I want to continue on by saying, look, I don't hate Bear. I actually love Bear. I do. I know it might sound strange, but it's like when the Father loves us, right? Sometimes the Father will put some not-so-pleasant things in our lives in order to kind of shake us back awake because we get so caught up in our own thing and in our own mind and our own wants and desires, we think that we're hearing the Father speak, but we're not. We're hearing ourselves speak. And then we start to justify things, right? You know, God wants me to have a new jet plane, right? God wants me to have a bunch of night vision, right? We start to justify things. We start to justify things like, oh, it's okay to have all this money. It's okay to have all these things. You know why you always see me wearing the same shirts? And part of it is poverty, yes. I own five fucking t-shirts. I own two pairs of jeans. That's all I own. Do I need more? Yeah. Do I want more? Yeah. Can I get more? Hmm, not so much. Not so much. It is what it is. Believe me, my favorite food is steak. If I could afford to get my teeth taken care of simply so that I could eat a nice juicy steak, I'd be all about it. But I can't. And the Father won't let me lie and cheat people, not even a little bit, not even the littlest little bit. I'm not allowed to lie. I'm not allowed to stretch the truth. And neither are you, Bear. Neither are you. You're not hearing the Father. If you're hearing something, you need to take stock in that. You need to look into that. If you're hearing something from someone, you need to look into that. Do you know how I can confirm my message that I'm giving you today? And I'm, I'm speaking to everybody. And, and this is going to sound so strange. But the Father does truly work in mysterious ways. And you have to be watchful of it to be able to pick up on it. Do you happen to notice anything different about this video versus the prior two videos that I had made? Anything different? It's probably, pun intended, glaring at you. 
Look at how white, nice looking that fence is behind me. I didn't do that. I didn't do that. No, I didn't wake up and it was done. Wasn't some kind of a miracle. No. But early this morning, I can't remember what time. Pretty early. He knows I get up early. Uh, I got a message from the landlord. And he said, uh, heads up, going to be out today um, to wash the fence. Okay. Sounds good. That's what I said. Okay. So that's what I usually say to him. Okay. Sounds good. Um, that's a typical response from me, by the way. Um, I'm not one much to talk over text. I hate it. Um, but anyway, I didn't do, I didn't ask him to do this. We had a discussion last year during the summer about pressure washing the fence, which isn't my fence, by the way, it's his fence, but pressure washing the fence. And then behind you, there's another section of fence that's identical to that, but it's, it's like, kind of like an, um, yeah, an L shape, if you will, right? Like that. Um, and it's just to more or less block the wind from hitting the door and you can't see it because it's like the camera is right there right? <laughs> So it's behind the camera. But anyway, not important. My point is Is that out of the blue and I knew I was going to be out here making this video today. I Get this message from the landlord saying I'm gonna come and wash the fence now, I kind of liked the way it was, to be honest. I don't know, I kind of liked that, you know. Kind of reminded me of a homesteady kind of look with all, the, with all the moss and stuff going on it. But, uh, yeah, little things, and in many cases, strange things. So, let's continue on. Uh, because this is, this, is, this is important stuff here. So, um... I had mentioned just a little bit ago about how, uh, you know, the father works in, in strange ways and sometimes the father puts stumbling blocks in our way, right, to wake us up, to give us a hint. Do you think by chance, Bear, that this deal going on with your card, well, with the card processor, with the merchant that you're using, and I know you're limited on what you can say because of legal reasons, I get all that, I understand that, believe me. More than you could ever imagine, Bear, all right? You made a comment about how YouTube is such a little bit of you. YouTube is not even a little bit of me. Not even a little bit of me. You don't see me pandering for viewers, do you? Can you ever show me a single video where I'm pandering for viewers like you do, Bear? I don't do it. Why don't I do it? Because we're not supposed to. Not supposed to. Just like we're supposed to counter army and that all that nine nine yards. Not supposed to. Now, people are to seek you. You're not supposed to drag them in. They are to seek you. You can justify all kinds of stuff you want, but I truly understand this book. And why? Because I wasn't ordained by Joe Fox. Because I was ordained by the Father himself. I didn't ask for it, homie. Not even a little bit. I didn't even go to church. Nothing. I did not ask for it. Not in any way, shape, or form. What I did is I went to work. And laughed my ass off. At a, at a co-worker. When he told me he was an ordained minister. That is what kicked this all off. It wasn't because I was seeking him. Not at all. I would say the deal going on with your card pro or with the card processor that your merchant uses, to be accurate, is probably a wake-up call, especially if it's only happening to you. Isn't there anything up there going ding, 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 ding? Oh, no, it's not that. It's because specifically you are targeted because of the bad, mean, evil. Nah, nah. See, God can step in and stop any evil from happening <gasps> at any point in time. And I know you won't debate that, Bear. He can step in and stop evil at any time. Right? <gasps> he could have stepped in 
and stopped my ex from pulling what what she did, all right? Absolutely could have stepped in. But why would he when I wasn't minding him? Why would he when I wasn't minding him? And he didn't. It's been over 10 years since I've seen my kids. And I consider it a blessing. Not that I haven't seen my kids, but if it wasn't for what the father did to wake me up and to shake me up, I would not have the connection with him that I do today. Not even remotely. And I already had a pretty damn good connection to him. But I was busy living for myself and finding words in here that would help me justify every damn thing I was doing. He will slap the shit out of you, Bear, and I think he's getting ready to do it. It's not that I hate you, man. I do. I do love you. I have loved you since the, the first time i seen your content. I think you did a great job, stand-up job. But, man, you hit 100,000 100, subscribers, and you just lost everything that made you good. You lost absolutely everything that made you good. And you started pandering for people. Sham wowing the hell out of people. Doing everything you can to profit monetarily and other ways. It's not the way, Bear. And you can justify it and bullshit all, the all you want. But it's not the way, man. Not the way. Um... I think it's a hint from y'all. Uh, one more comment about this morning's show. Your first show was like less than two minutes because you got or two minutes, 46 seconds. I don't know. Um, because you got pissed off because people were upset because they couldn't hear you. Listen, my computer is connected up to a decent sound system. The echo was horrible, man. It was hard to understand you. It was that bad. I know you own some blankets. So instead of being a narcissist and throwing a fit at your viewers because of your problem, maybe you can take your ass uh, wherever the hell you got them and grab some blankets, some comforters, some big old thick comforters and hang them on the walls until you get stuff in there. So knock the, why don't you take action to fix the problem instead of taking the narcissistic way of attacking your viewership for your problem? I think I got that clear. Do something, man! Fuck! You YouTubers, man. You guys are something else. You guys are something else. Something else. By the way, you need to tighten up your security, Bear. No, <laughs> you need to tighten up your security. If you doubt what I'm saying, contact me offline and I'll give you the GPS coordinates of Caleb House. Okay? I'll give you Google Photos of Caleb House. Yeah. By the way, I still don't buy that it's for survivors of trafficking. And that's my opinion. I think it's your bug out plan. And I think you're conning the people into paying for your bug out plan. Am I wrong? Well, good news. There's a way that you can prove I'm wrong. And a way that you could not do nothing and prove you're full of shit and you're conning people. So, you mentioned today that you're all funded by the people and yourself and all that. I can respect that. But I also remember when you were looking for a grant writer. So don't tell me that the reason why you're self-funded is because you want to keep the government out. That's a lie. Again, even the little lie there is not good. It's not okay. It's not approved. And that one little lie totally trashes your relationship with the Father and totally trashes every bit of work that you're doing. 
You can try to bullshit me all you want. But I know this stuff. We're going to get into that in the second part of this video on how I know this stuff. And it's damn well not these books in front of you. You mentioned before that you had to do this, 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 and this in order to have approval by, um, I can't remember which agency off the top of my head. I don't think it's Children and Family Services. I think it's somebody else. I can't remember who it is, but you said you had to have this, 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 and this. It had to be done this, 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 and this for approval, right? Good, right, you're correct, okay? So there's a, a process involved in all of that. You're going to have to have inspections. You're going to have to have this. You're gonna, so there's paperwork. I get, and again, contact me. I'll give you the GPS location of Quick Caleb House. And when you're done picking your jaw up off the fucking floor, maybe we can talk about securing your security up. You know, I could have helped you with that website. I told you, I told you when you guys signed up for Shopify, it was a mistake. You probably didn't hear me because I'm a little peon that don't know anything. But I warned you about it then. And look at where you are today. I told you then that free of charge, I would have hooked you up with a website with Hike a Shop as your cart, which you control. And then you've got your choice of payment processors to go with. You've got your choice of payment processors to go with. Hike a Shop. Own your own shit, Bear. Own your own shit. You want to fix that problem? Then stop being lazy and using things like Shopify. I've been doing websites for over 30 years, Bear. One of a billion hats I wear. I've been doing websites a long time. I wasn't trying to misguide, misdirect. I know a thing or two. I get you're not dumb either. You're actually the opposite. You're very intelligent. I think you're con artists, though. I think you're using it for bad purposes. Shitty security. Deal with that. I do have a few notes here. So there's anyway, there's paperwork involved, right? Paperwork that wouldn't give away the location or anything like that. But there's paperwork involved in what you're doing. So if Caleb House is the real deal, show us some paperwork. Let's do a little better than that. Have your people contact me. I'll put your people in contact with my people and we'll verify it. And I'll come out and say I'm completely wrong. I'm the one who's full of shit. You got my word on that. Have your people contact me. I'll put your people in contact with my people. And we'll get this sorted. Otherwise, I think you're a con artist. There's paperwork involved that you can share. Don't try to bullshit me that there's not. You're messing the wrong one, dude. I am the wrong one. Literally in the process of exposing our own local city government. Right? And I've already got a lot. I've still got people feeding me with information. I will get to the bottom of shit there. And I'm not afraid of anybody because I'm serving him and only him, not man. There's a big difference in your attitude. You become a, we'll just say this, you'll become a big dickhead when you're only concerned with serving him. I mean a big dickhead to everybody, everybody. So anyway, <laughs> let's, uh, let's get to the topic here. Let's talk about the uh, not so infallible, fallible, quote unquote, word of God. I've got a bunch of books laid out in front of you here. <sighs> Some of them I actually like quite a bit. I mean, you, you never can go wrong with Strong's uh, Concordance. Can't go wrong with that. Um, 
you know, I do like the King James Bible. I've got my little, my, now I feel like a Pharisee is what I'm feeling like now. That's what you remind me of as a Pharisee, but it's camouflage. Because I got a thing for camouflage. Um, you can't tell. So, uh, I've got just some books here. By no means are they all of them. And these are physical books. The list of digital books I have is just stupid. It's insane. Um, so, I will real quick go over my, my favorite Bible. I've talked about this before. This is my pride and joy. This is my treasure. This is a freebie that was sent to me. Um, when all that happened with my family, uh, I didn't have a dime to my name. I didn't have clothes. I, well, I still don't really have clothes. but, um, And so I contacted. I had watched a video. And the man on the video said that if you need a Bible, don't have a Bible, can't afford a Bible, contact me. It wasn't you, Bear, but I appreciate what you do with that. So I contacted Lucas Cameron of Seven Trumpets Prepper. And um, he sent me the Hallelujah Scriptures, which is pretty much exactly identical to these scriptures. I don't know, actually, if there's any differences in it. I don't know. None that I have noticed, but it doesn't mean that there is none. Um, so this is my favorite Bible. And not because it was given to me by Seven Trumpets Prepper, but because this is the Bible that saved my life in every way. This is, this is the Bible that I literally, and still do, go to bed with. This sets on my headboard. This is where this goes. I sleep with this Bible. This Bible is one of my very most important possessions. Without this, you would be without me. Plain and simple. So, and then, of course, you guys uh, should be familiar with this one. This is the one that, that Bear has, or recommends. Um, and I do too. It's a good Bible. Nothing wrong with it at all. Uh, the one thing I do like about the Hallelujah Scriptures um, versus the, the Scriptures is uh, I got this, name meanings with this, and that's handy. That's like really handy, nice touch. So, um, especially when you're first learning and stuff, it really helps. So, as far as the names and stuff like that. So, I've got another one here that is probably going to be a bit controversial. The Book of Mormon, right? This was given to me by uh, one of the wonderful ladies that, that had came by and spoke with us. Um, I told them, day one, from the jump, that you're not going to convert me. I'm Hebrew. <laughs> but I will be more than happy to fellowship with you and talk about the Word with you. And I was. And we had several visits, not the same girls. Um, and it's been, I think there's only ever been one boy. All the others have been girls. And there's been several different girls over time because they do their missions and they're in and they're out and they're moved around and all of that stuff. So um, we've spoken with several girls. And the last time that, that they had come, I was given the ultimatum. Now I had to do this, this, this. And I'm like, whoa, 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 wait, wait a minute back the truck out. I never said I wanted to be Mormon. In fact, I said the opposite. I won't be Mormon. I won't be anything. I take upon the title Hebrew because it's the only one that makes any damn sense as to my position. The only one. And it's also not really uh, an official, you know, it's, it's not, you can't say I'm Hebrew and know exactly what it is I stand for because different Hebrew people stand for many different, you know, things. But, um, I will not allow you to call me or consider me a Christian. And we're going to be getting into that and, and why. The reason I bring up the Book of Mormon 
is because I just want to personally verify. Um, I always get his name wrong. Always. I think it's Joseph. But uh, um, I want to I wanna make sure. Yeah, Joseph Smith. I wanted to make sure. I, I always say Russell, which is Russell's their quote-unquote elected prophet or however the hell that works. I don't buy it. I don't believe it. No, I don't. No. No. The Russell character or whatever that's in there. No. He's not there by God. He's there by man. Okay. However, Joseph Smith was the real deal. How can I say that? Because I read his story. And I've got much the same story, man. Much the same story. So I know, I know from personal experience that Joseph Smith was telling the truth. At least to the level of that the father had been in contact with him directly. I can verify that. 100%. 100%. Because I've been there, I've done that, I know how it works, and I know the, the rules, the stipulations. Yeah. One of them, ironically, you're not allowed to be a part of any religious doctrine, which is probably one of the biggest rules of it. And yet, they're trying to get me a part. See, the Mormon church today is not what the Mormon church was intended by Joseph Smith. It was all screwed up by man as usual. But that's going down roads that are not necessary here. So what's my big beef with Christianity? Well, for one, they will sit there and the first thing that they'll tell you about is how, you know, whichever one you want to pick up, it doesn't matter. How this is the infallible word of God. My first question is, is if this is the infallible word of God, then how can I be sure that that's correct and that maybe the Gideon's Bible isn't the infallible word of God, right? Or, uh, I don't know, I've got all kinds of stuff, man. Uh, journaling Bible, I've got Old Testament, New Testament, Oxford, annotated Bible. You see what I'm saying here? Which one of those are the infallible one? Which one? Can you show me? No, you can't. Why? Because every single damn one of them are fallible. Every single one of them, including the scriptures, is fallible. There's a prerequisite in order to be a Christian. You know what it is? And I'm telling you right now, it's a damn lie. It is the biggest part of the Great Deception. Do you know what the prerequisite is to being a Christian? The death and the resurrection that Yeshua died on the cross for our sins? <laughs> you need to go ask the Father about that one. You see, one of the very frustrating things on this spiritual journey with me is I'm very good at remembering things. I've got a memory like a tank. And if you know me personally, you'll know that. And the more you, the more you know me personally, the more you'll know it. I've got a memory like a tank. But out of all the things on the planet, there are two things that I can't remember. I can't remember dates, like, you know, whoever sailed the ocean blue in 1842, whatever. I can't remember dates. We're the damn, right? Um, I can remember my kids' birthdays and my own, <laughs> but uh, that's pretty much all I try for. I used to remember Ozzy's birthday. Uh, I think it's December 3rd, December 6th, something like that, sometime beginning of December, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know. Doesn't matter. But the other thing is scripture. Out of all the things that I can remember and literally see photographically, I can't remember scripture. Not like that. I, can, I remember what it says and what it means and all that, but I don't remember it verbatim. I can't see it the same way that I see everything else. And you know how frustrating that is. 
it's extremely frustrating. And you'd be a complete fool not to think that the father and I haven't been at odds over that more than once. Because we have. And the Father made me, and the Father knows who I am, and the Father knows that I am one. I don't give up. I don't give in. <laughs> I am resilient like no other. And I think the Father, we, we have a respect with one another. If there is something I truly feel like I need to know, I will keep on him just like I will keep on you or anybody else. He gets no different treatment from me when it comes to that kind of stuff. And so he finally explained to me why it is. And this was pretty early on in my journey with him. He explained to me why it is that I'm, I'm not capable of remembering that because it's not correct. Now there's a lot of stuff in the Bible that is correct, but the most important parts are not. And all I can tell you to do is take it to God. I can't sit here and show you texts. I can't sit here and prove to you anything that I'm saying. All I can do is tell you to take it to God. Ask Yah yourself. Go to prayer. Receive what he says. But this whole death and resurrection nonsense? Hmm. No. If you want an easy way to figure it out, it's pretty simple. Go look at the other belief systems around the world because most all of the belief systems around the world are pretty much a carbon copy of each other including the Muslim faith. <gasps> yeah. Some people need to grow up and learn what different languages mean. Some people, I don't, I don't know if they're born retarded or they worked hard at it their entire life. I, I don't know. But maybe we shouldn't just go with the flow. You know what I mean? Maybe we should take that moment to take that extra step to try to find out the truth for ourselves. Maybe. Quran tells the same damn story this tells. Anybody that says that's false didn't read either one. I've read both multiple times. I don't have my Quran out here. I've got a copy of the Quran. I don't think I've got it out. No, not out here. And not for any reason. It's just not one of the books I grabbed. I'd have been just as happy to have the Quran sitting right here front and center. People need to grow up. They need to grow up. And you know what? When you look into those other belief systems, and you look at how things shook out in those other belief systems, you'll see some definite differences, especially during the time of the death and resurrection. And you'll find out that, you know, not so much death. I don't know that I would call it a resurrection, but he did live. He did live because he went into that cave. <gasps> what? He did live because he did go into that cave. And his followers that followed him into the cave had everlasting life. Not eternal. There's no word for eternal in, in biblical times. There's, there's, it was never said. Eternal was never said. Everlasting. Longer. Not forever. People get a lot of stuff confused. They want to throw all the smoke and the mirrors and the magic and all that. And there is a little bit of that, but not much. Not much. Not even enough really worth mentioning. A lot of the book is based on science. Imagine that. He didn't go and turn water into wine. That's not how that worked. 
That is not how that worked. He taught them fermentation. He taught them how to turn water into wine. What is so hard about understanding that? Why do we have to add all the magic and the smoke and the mirrors and say, water turned into wine? That's not how it worked. That's not what happened there. He taught them how to ferment. He taught them science. I mean, I guess if you demand to be Sam Wild, you're going to be Sam Wild, I guess. So, I don't know. If you refuse to be Sham Wild, you're going to see a whole lot of stuff others don't. I don't know what else to add. Be very mindful. Be very, 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 very careful. Be very careful of where you hear about the Father from. My advice would go to the Father and only the Father, other than reading the Bible yourself. But understand that it's fallible and that man had intentionally put hurdles in here for you because they're trying to trip you up for the times that are happening right now. They're trying to trip you up. They don't want you to know the truth about the whole quote-unquote death and resurrection because that would be instruction to you on what to do with the coming pull ship. Go into the caves. Like the Hopis did. I mean, come on. Go into caves. Mayans did it. I mean... You have to read the belief system. You have to look into the belief systems from around the world if you truly want an understanding of what this was supposed to tell you. But if you read this alone, you're going to be so misguided, you won't stand a chance. Not a chance. And it was done that way on purpose by the Catholics and the Jews during the Council of Nicaea, and I will call it out to its face. Plain and simple. Catholics, by the way, were the Romans, if you didn't know. By the way, just a reminder, what's the top two controlling and largest religious organizations on the planet Earth? Holy cow. The same two groups of people responsible for killing the Messiah. And Christians are so backwards that they are literally, literally screaming in support of the people that killed and continue to deny their Messiah. You can't fix that much stupid. But I'm telling you, it's all part of the great deception. I'm not going to beg anybody to follow me. I'm not going to beg any. No, I'm going to ask you to look into it for yourself. That's what I'm going to ask of you. Anyway, I am going to get out of here. An hour is long enough. I thought I saw, oh no, 39 minutes. Sorry, I thought I was looking at the wrong thing. Um, 39 minutes is definitely long enough. Um, I don't know. He told me to make this video and I made this video. Good? We'll know. <laughs> I hope you have a wonderful and blessed day. Shalom.